Hello everyone, Wade from High Tech Legion here, and with over 1500 videos uploaded, if you haven't seen it here, you may not have seen it anywhere. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a tutorial of the Biostar Hi-Fi Z97WE UEFI BIOS. And what we're looking at here is the first screen that you get into, and that gives you some quick heads up information with the BIOS information and version and the build date, your total memory, the speed that it's running at, and the system language. You also have your system date, which you can set here, and your system time. You can also click on the clock up here to give this to get this nice little window for setting the time, which makes it quite a bit easier than some other BIOS that I've seen. You've got some other heads up information here, including your CPU speed, voltage that it's running at, your speed of your memory, and the voltage that it's running at, CPU fan, RPM, and your CPU temperature. So that's the main menu. And you also have your keys over here, of course, that give you your information on how to navigate the BIOS. F3, for example, optimize defaults. F10 to save and exit, which is pretty typical. And F12 gives you gets you into the BIOS flash. Under advanced settings, we have our PCI subsystem settings. You can click on that and go press escape to go back to the previous menu. ACPI settings, you can go in here and set the sleep states and what can power on the device it. Trusted computing module, CPU settings and information. So this is right where you get your information on your CPU and you, where you can enable hyper-threading or change the processor cores that are um, set to be running on this. You have your rapid storage technology, your SATA configuration, which is nice here that it is defaulted to AHCI mode. It gives you your information on your drives. What's interesting about this board is that they're labeled SATA 1 lower, SATA 1 upper. SATA 2 lower, SATA 2 upper, etc. USB configuration. Here you can change the USB mode and the timeouts on your USB transfer. Smart fan control. So you, if you're using PW, PWM fans, you can enable smart fan control and that will allow the motherboard to control the fan speeds based on the temperature. You have your I.O. configuration for your serial port. Hardware monitor that gives you a whole bunch of information on temperatures, fan speeds, and voltages. Smart Connect technology. Your network stack configuration. Under chipset, your PCI I.O. configuration. So this is where you can disable um, your LAN ports if you wanted to and also set the information on the PCI slots. System agent configuration sets you can set your primary display and other settings for your PCI X16 slots here. Under boot of course we have boot settings so we have our uh, full screen logo display and whether fast boot is enabled and also your boot options here. Boot option one, boot option two, you can just double click on those and it brings up the menu that allows you to pick those. You can also set the boot option priority under the hard drive priorities. Under security, you can set an administrator password or a user password and also set the um, hard drive password if you wanted to under secure boot the secure boot menu you can disable secure boot or secure boot mode which are typically really only used with Windows 8.8 and 8.1 under one this is where you would do your overclocking you have your CPU configuration here now one thing I definitely noticed right away is that the default settings on this motherboard are a little bit off um, 3.7 gigahertz on a 4770K, which should be a 3.9 gigahertz for the turbo. And also, you'll notice that the base clock is overrided to 100.5 instead of 100. So those are the 
these are the default settings for the uh, the board. I really I ended up setting these to uh, specifically to what the default should be to of 39 for the CPU ratio or for the turbo and um, <clears throat> and to 100 for the host clock or base clock speed on this before testing. This is where you can set all your overclocking settings. You can set your C states, you can set the active processor cores, hyper threading. So this is also on that other CPU screen that we looked at. Um, you have your power limits and turbo mode, etc. You also have one for your configuration of your memory. Also where you would set your XMP profile. So you would double click that and pick your XMP profile. You have a voltages configuration page which has all your various voltages for your CPU and memory insight, Biostar memory insight which allows you to look at specific information for the DIMMs that are in each slot. Finally, of course, we have our save and exit page, which allows you to discard changes and exit, save and reset, restore the defaults, override the boot, launch an EFI shell from a USB device, for example, back up your profiles for overclocking, etc. And again, you have your quick hotkeys over here. So if we wanted to save and exit, we could press F10, or we can press escape which you, I'm sure you saw this pop up a couple times, uh, that will give you quit without saving. Another thing I noticed about this particular BIOS version is that the mouse doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to click on a button several times or use the keyboard to be able to press enter to say yes on this. Um, definitely fairly easy to navigate BIOS. Has all the options that you need, especially on a budget to mainstream motherboard that we're looking at here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful. For the full review of this motherboard, definitely check out www.hightechlegion.com. Also don't forget to check out our unboxing video where we're going to go through the features and look at the board itself. And please subscribe to our YouTube page, Twitter page, and Facebook page. Take care.